All right, today I'm gonna go over what, uh, some ways to electrically test your N75 valve to make sure the wiring's appropriate. Um, my car is working properly, so we're only gonna see good results. Uh, but hopefully this can help somebody having <clears throat> an issue or a code for their N75 uh, circuit and they can at least see what it should be so they can test theirs, know whether it's good or bad. And then they can go from there with trying to find the short or open or whatever they have. So first of all, here's this is on a mine is a BEW. First thing we got to do, unplug the connector right there. All right, once you've got it unplugged, uh, you got to put the key in, turn it forward. Uh, car not running, just key on, engine off. All right, now that we are key on, engine off, we can start uh doing some testing all right so to start you're gonna want to have a good quality meter so you know you're accurate uh, and then come up to your connector here uh so <clears throat> red is what you're going to be testing with other one on negative and on this pin you should see battery voltage and on the other pin, you should see roughly that it's going to fluctuate because it's a pulse with modulated signal. So it's not going to be steady as we're measuring in DC. And that's just the meter is going to try and average out what it sees. So that's why it's going to be fluctuating. But that is what you should be seeing on that pin. And then on the other pin, you should see battery voltage approximately. Uh, if you don't see battery voltage, uh, if you don't see battery voltage there, check the fuse for that. And then the fuse that feeds that also feeds a bunch of other stuff under the hood, like your EGR and your O2 and stuff like that as well. So if you don't have battery voltage there, chances are you have <clears throat> more than just an N75 code. Anyways, uh, if you wanna test your N75, I'll show you how to uh, ohm out the N75 valve itself. I'm gonna grab a spare I have off the bench and then I'll show you what you should be seeing there. All right, so to test an N75, this is a new one that I bought when I was having issue on my other car. Uh, I have since done some stuff to my other car, so I no longer use an N75 on that car. So I have the pigtail from it. Just makes this a little easier, but if you don't, it's not a problem. You can just touch the pins inside. Uh, so you hook them up, doesn't matter which side goes to which side. Uh, come over to your meter, switch it to ohms. My meter is auto ranging and that is uh, from a known good new map <clears throat> N75 with that part number for BW. ALH might be slightly different, I'm not sure, but basically you just want to make sure it's not somewhere around there would be my recommendation. If it's something crazy like 100, it's probably got an issue or even 50 maybe, but you want her somewhere around here is what I would say. All right, so that's a quick little electrical test of for the N75. Uh, gives you a couple of numbers that uh, you kind of want to see. If you see other than that, you know you got a bit of a problem. And uh, as for tracing down the problem, that uh, would kind of lead to, depending on what you find, where you got to go. But I can't really get into every single way to trace down wiring issues because there's so many different ways and wares and places that the issue could be coming from so you'll kind of have to uh, use your own experience and knowledge and whatnot to kind of figure out and trace back the wiring uh, as you see fit if you have an issue there um, actually I'll give you a little trick if you are taking apart your wiring harness i'll show you a neat little tool that i use to help pull apart harnesses um go in my toolbox here 
see if I can't find it. All right, so this is the tool. Hopefully you can kind of see what we got going on there. This is actually for, uh, it's from, <clears throat> for sewing or doing stuff with fabric. This is a thread ripper. So you can go in, it's designed for going into your stitching and your shirt or jeans or whatever you're sewing together and it can just cut the threads. It's actually sharp in the middle there, but it works great when you're trying to cut and peel the tape off of wiring, kind of slips in there and cuts a little bit safer than just sticking a razor blade in and trying to cut straight down. Because a lot of times with the razor blade, you'll end up nicking the sheathing on your wires. Uh, and that's just gonna lead to further issues down the road once some moisture and stuff works its way in there. So this, you can kind of get it in, point it, and then just go straight down along. Uh, it's not gonna guarantee you're not gonna nick or cut wires, but uh, it is, if you're careful and you go nice, it does make it a little bit easier than using a razor blade, um, but you can kinda do whatever you think uh, works best for you. Cause you know, it is your car, you are working on it. So you gotta do, uh, do it the way you wanna do it. Just because somebody says this is how you do it doesn't mean that's how it has to be done. There's many ways to do things. And as long as you get to the end result without a whole bunch of damaged wires, uh, that's kind of what matters. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of me rambling on there, but uh, that's kind of things you can check electrically to make sure I uh, figure out your issue. If you have a, a circuit code, or performance codes maybe for your N75. Uh, yeah, so hope you enjoyed it, or hope, hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you did find it helpful or you are enjoying my videos, uh, please leave a comment, uh, please subscribe. Uh, it just helps, um, helps the channel grow and um, I can keep putting out more videos like this and of uh, the progress on my uh, a big turbo car, big-ish turbo car. I know there's people with bigger turbos. There's always somebody bigger than you. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.